Okay, howdy AP Prego. I am back and not gonna lie, this semi-log plot um, topic is messing with my head. It's a little tricky for me to understand. So we're working on it. This is the first year I have ever taught this, um, but if I can do it, you can do it. Here we go. Um, okay, so what's happening here in this next problem, we have a, we wanted to come up with a, an equation P of T. Okay, um, and so we we can look at this. The log of this p value is equal to well, they have they have made it into this line where we have um, m x or t for time plus b. So if we think of it as a log, excuse me, if we think of this part as being a line, y equals m x plus b, um, we can then switch this from logarithmic form to exponential form. And so it's i heart logs. It's ten to the m t plus b equals p, so p of t is equal to 10 to some power like this. And if you remember, we can, we can use our properties of exponents to say that it is, well, the constant would be um, 10 to the b times 10 to the mt, or we could just write this as 10 to the, I could get rid of this m right here, put it here and then raise it to the T. Notice, here's, here's how I was able to kind of wrap my head around some of these. I have an initial amount times a growth factor to a, to a, to a certain power, okay? So since this is linear here on the semi-log plot and it's growing, that tells me this is gonna be an exponential growth when I convert it from semi-log back to the regular world we live in. Um, this is linear not exponential. That eliminates that possibility. This is exponential, but it's not, it has this plus two, and we're not dealing with that. If you notice here, um, this ended up saying something like 10 to the b times 10 to the m to the t. We have some number here times some number here to a power. Well, there's a plus sign here, and I don't see any plus signs there. So that eliminates, yes, it's exponential, but it has that vertical shift and we're not looking at that. This is logarithmic, but we don't want it logarithmic. That's how we know that D is the correct answer. Okay, um, so next one, they gave us more problems to practice plotting. Um, you know what, I'm gonna skip that. I think I have that in my other video. I think it's good enough, um, but I would suggest you do it. Um, I'll probably in class have everybody practice this and then we'll check my answer key or something like that. Okay, the next one they're saying, here's this set of data. Um, and now, which graph could correspond to that? Well, when I look at this, I've got um, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Okay, so 1 to 10. That might be right. I don't know. 1 through 5, uh, 1 through 5, 1 through 5. So far, those are all fine as far as the x values go. The y values, I have, um, well, notice, okay, so on this one, they're being scaled linearly. Well, that's not a semi-log plot, so that takes that one out. This one, it might be scaled exponentially, but we are only we only get as high as 10, and this thing got as high as 203. So that would be why I would take that one out. This one, these points might be fine. This does kind of look like 203, which was our biggest value. Um, but once again, this is 50, 100, 150. This is scaled linearly, no good. So let's look at this one. On this one, we do have, it does appear to be linear, which actually just having the data doesn't necessarily mean that it will appear to be linear, but the, the scaling here is exponential. And so this is the best one to use um, to describe our semi-log plot. And we can double check. Um, this is showing me, I see the point one, this is 10, 20, 30, it looks like 40. Aha, there's 140. And then I see, um, Let's see if I can make this larger for you. Then I see the point two, and this appears to be 10, 20, 30, 40, 50. Is that 60? Oh, oh <laughs> too far. Yes, yes it is. And then this appears to be three, and then it's just shy of that 100, so 390 does seem to work. Um, then this is between 100 and 200, but it looks a little less than halfway there. So 135 is the, oh, sorry, you couldn't see what I was looking at. And then this last one seems a little bit above 200, so this is gonna be our best answer. Okie dokie. Okay, so now we can, um, we can use this, this formula, y equals um, log base n of b times x, so the, the average rate of change, the slope, becomes this log base n of b. Um, and our n value is, becomes the scale here. 
So if I'm scaling by 10, then I'm just going to use log base 10. Um, and then my y-intercept is log base n of a, and then, then this b comes in here, this a goes in there. Um, okay, so they're looking at this one. <coughs> Excuse me. So I see the point, I see the point 1, 10, 20, 30, I think this would be 40. So I see the point... This is 1, 40. And then this is 40, 50, 60, I think. Um, I'm able to zoom on the iPad. So then when I want to go find the average rate of change, this is the y value. It's log of this. It's log of that. So it looks to me like it's that point, but it's actually, maybe this is bad notation. Maybe I shouldn't write this. I should say I've got the point 1, log of 40, and I've got the point 2, log of 60. Oh, you couldn't see what I was doing. I'm so sorry. Okay, so now to find the average rate of change, I'm going to do log of 60 minus log of 40 over 2 minus 1. Um, and so I started, when I worked the first few problems, I started storing my answers um, so that I wouldn't have to round and, and do weird things like that because I wanted to get be precise. Um, but then I realized I can use properties of log. So the subtraction squishes together with division. So 60, um, 60 over 40 can reduce to 20 goes in there 3, 20 goes in there 2. This becomes log of 3 halves over, well, 1, which I don't need. Okay. So the average rate of change is this value right here. So my B value is going to be 3 halves which will help me down here. So we just said b is equal to 3 halves. Okay, so what do I have so far? I have that y is equal to log of 3 halves um, times, let's use parentheses here, times x, because you'll notice that this value becomes the slope. Um, and hang on, I'm too zoomed out. This value becomes the slope, and it's multiplied times x. It's not log of three halves x. It's not a log. So this is a constant times that x. Okay, so now to find this other part, I need to know, um, I, well, I could plug in the values that I have to find log of a. So I know I can say y is equal to um, log of three halves times x plus um, what is it? log base 10 of a. Well, let's plug in. Let's pick a random point. Um, I can use, this is the point 1, and then log of 40. Um, so the, the y value is log of 40. The x value was 1, and I need to find to this a value. Okay, so I can subtract this away, and I can say log of 40 minus log of 3 halves, um, plus, if you notice on my answer key, oh, I lied, not plus, this should be equals. If you notice on my answer key, I started storing all these different values, um, but I think that using properties of logs is actually better. So now we need to do 40 divided by 3 halves. So what is 40 divided by 3 halves? When I divide by a fraction, I multiply by the reciprocal. I have 40 times 2 over 3 which is going to equal 80 over 3. We could have equal signs here everywhere, sorry. Okay, so this became log of 80 over 3 is equal to log of A. Um, and now my A value is equal to 80 over 3, and that is the exact value that I'm looking for. If I had plugged things, things in my calculator, I could store it as whatever, um, but then I'd have all these gross, nasty decimals um, to write down. So this is, this is actually a better way to do this. So our final answer here um, for the linear one, it's log of the b value, which was 3 halves. Um, we just said a was um, 80 over 3. So, so log of b, so log of 3 halves, times, so all that in parentheses, times x, plus log base n, which is 10, of a, so plus log of 80 over 3. And this is that linear equation, which can correspond to y is equal to the a value is 80 over 3 times um, the b value is 3 halves to the x power. Okay, and let's see. So we have, it appears that we've got... Um, 
Well, let's see. Let's see what happens when I come to my table. Uh, menu. Table. Sorry, you can't see what I'm doing, but okay, delete. Um, if I have 80 over 3 times, I don't know that I need the times in all the parentheses, but it just makes me feel better that I'm raising. Okay, so the x power. We wanted to see on my table, when I plug in 1, I got a value of 40. Um, okay, so it's a value of 40. I got a 2, I get a 60, I have a 3, there's 90. 4 is 135, and that could be those values. Um, when I have changed it to a, a, to a linear world, I'm using, um, okay, so this is the point 140, but when I go to graph it as a line, I want to use the point 1 log of 40 because um, it would not, 140 and then 260 would give me an exponential equation, which is what I'm getting here. Oh, goodness, you guys, this is going to take all of us a little bit of practice. So good luck. Um, I would suggest you do as much as you can without your calculator um, just to kind of get a better sense of what's happening. Um, but we'll keep practicing this um, and see if we can all learn it together. Good luck. Go study.